This tutorial will show you how to use the control panel for the Nanslow remote microscope. When you log into the remote lab, you'll see a screen with an icon on it for a microscope. Click it to start the program. This window may, may open behind another one, so you might have to look for it. But this is the control panel for the microscope. What we see here on the left side of the screen are the controls for the microscope stage itself, the controls for the microscope camera to modify the image, and on the right side of the screen we see a video window and controls for an external pan tilt zoom camera which we'll look at in a minute. The first thing you'll probably want to do is to call into the voice conference which will allow you to talk to your lab partners and to the lab techs who are there in the lab to assist you. To join the voice conference click on this yellow button that's at the bottom of the page. You might need to scroll down to see it. This pop-up window will give you all the instructions you need to join the voice conference. You essentially just need to copy this web address into a new browser window and hit enter and follow the directions. Once it's started up the voice conference software on your computer, you'll have the option of either calling in with your telephone using the number and code that are shown on the screen, or using your mic and speakers on your computer to talk to your lab partners. Only one person can be in control of the interface at a given time. So just right click on the desktop and select Request Control of VI. If you're the first to do this, the buttons will now respond to you. If somebody else is in control at the time, you'll receive a message telling you that you've been placed in a queue. You can release control the same way by right-clicking and selecting the appropriate entry, and now somebody else can take control. To load a slide onto the microscope stage, click on the slide loader tab at the top of the screen. You'll see a drop-down list for up to four cassettes that can be loaded on the slide loader robot. In this case, we only have one cassette loaded. I've selected a slide that I wish to load, and then I click the Load button. You'll see a message here saying that the machine is loading a slide, and you can also watch this if you click the Picture and pit Picture button and click Preset 1. You can watch the slide loader robot do its thing. Now we see a slide has been loaded onto the stage. And we also notice that the cassette controls have been grayed out. Until you return the slide to the cassette, you will not be able to select another slide. A problem that often occurs when loading a slide is that it will be loaded but there will be nothing directly under the objective so you can't see anything. If you'll click on preset 2 and enable the picture-in-picture -picture camera you can zoom in closely on the slide that's on the stage. And in this case we can see that the subject on the slide that we're supposed to be looking at is not underneath the objective of the microscope itself. So, what we'll do is we'll use this to guide us as we move the stage to get that subject underneath the objective so we can see it. To do this, click on the Microscope tab and use the stage controls to move the slide in an appropriate direction. One note here is that the edge of the cover slip often seems very interesting to students but it really isn't something to be concerned about. It's just the edge of the little piece of glass that's covering the sample. As we continue moving the slide, we can see that the subject is now underneath the objective. 
and we can start to focus on that subject and look at what we're supposed to look at. Use the up and down arrows to focus and you can change the focus control from coarse to fine by clicking on the button in between the up and down buttons. In this part of the control panel we can change the objective. Currently we're using a 4x objective giving us 40 times magnification. We can change that to a 10x, 20x, 40, and 60 for a maximum of 600 times magnification. The condenser can be controlled with this button here. For the 4x objective, you want the condenser out as it is. But for 10x and higher, it's best to have the condenser in. This just sharpens the image and gives better contrast and better color. The microscope image can be modified in various ways to enhance the ability to see certain features. In this particular case, with the, the thread slide loaded, it won't make any real difference. But you can see that clicking on one of these will give different representations of the image, which may make it easier to find certain things on a slide, depending on what you're looking at. If you think that the color is off and needs to be corrected, you can click the white balance button. In this case, nothing was wrong, so you don't really see a change. If you turn the auto exposure off, you will now have controls for the lamp, the light source on the microscope. You can increase or decrease the intensity of that light or turn it off entirely, although that's not very useful. Usually it's best to leave auto exposure on. Once you've found something that you want to save an image of, click the captured image button here. When the button turns dark again, that means the image has been captured and you can view it by clicking view captured image. Once an image is captured, all lab partners who are viewing the same control panel can view the image simultaneously. Viewing the image this way gives you a much higher quality picture to look at, so you should use this to do any analysis on any slides that you're viewing. Of course, to analyze the image, you'll need to download it and save it on your computer. You can do this by right-clicking anywhere on the image and selecting Save Image As. Then you'll get a dialog box that pops up and you want to select Computer and then select your local disk. Once you've done that, find a location where you'd like to save the file and remember where it is so you can find it later. You also want to change the file name to something descriptive. If this doesn't work for you for some reason, you can alternatively take a screenshot of the image. There are several ways to do this depending on what kind of computer you have. Here are some ways to take screenshots with a Windows computer. If you have a Mac, it's even easier. And if you'd like some other options, there are plenty of free screenshot applications that you can download. When you're finished viewing the high resolution image and have saved it, you can close the window. Going back to the picture in picture camera, if we turn it on, we can see what's happening in the lab in real time. 
Hovering over the preset position buttons will show you what each of the presets is set to. For example, we can click on preset 2 to zoom in on the objectives. And when we change objectives, we see them change in the picture-in-picture -picture camera. We can also watch the slide loader robot as it removes the slide. In some cases, you may want to move the camera manually to get a better frame to see what you're looking at. You can also zoom in or zoom out as you wish. When you're finished with the slide, go back to the slide loader tab and click return slide to cassette. Notice the message to wait while the robot is busy and you can also watch it in the picture-in-picture -picture camera. Now you're ready to select a different slide and go on with your procedure. When you're finished, or when you want to pass control to a lab partner, right-click anywhere on the screen and select Release Control of VI. Now someone else can take control. Don't forget to call in to the voice conference because otherwise you won't know what your lab partners are doing.